So I've got to do a video on a 3D printer with cold and a nose like Niagara Falls. This is just going to be a snotty mess. But anyway, guys, this is a Sonic Mini 8K. My name's Luke. This is Geek Gaming Scenics, and I'll uh, I'll catch you after this. So, guys, if you're new to 3D printing, it's pretty terrifying. 3D printing companies are knocking out printers like a British teenager is knocking out kids. So it's really hard to keep track of. Um, I don't like doing reviews because of the technology advancements. So if you can call them advancements, it's just a spec race. Um, but it's quite frustrating when you're looking for printers because everybody's like, well, you need 4K, you need this, you need that, you need this. And what I've found with all the printers that I've tested over the last few years, uh, you can check from my older videos, it's not really about the specs because some printers with lower specs will print a better model than a printer with higher specs. It's about the quality of light and it's about the whole package. It's the resin, it's the build quality of the machine, it's, it's just everything. And this is why I'm not a fan of a cheap 4K printer. I'd rather have a cheap, uh, like a more expensive 2K printer than a cheap 4K printer, if that makes sense. And this is why this one piques me interest. It's full aluminium build. We've got dual renewal rails with a decent sized Z-Rod compared to some of my even bigger printers. And it's just a very well built machine. I'm yet to play with this and see it, but what I'm really curious about is this is 8K. It's double the resolution in a very small area compared to any of my other printers. So it's nearly double the resolution. Is that noticeable? And we'll compare that to a, a decent quality 4K printer and see if anybody can tell the difference. Because uh, it is a nice looking machine and uh, it's piqued my interest tenfold. Now using a new printer, setting it up to get started is when you really start getting a feel for the printer. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting it to be that much better. But all the little details had up to make this printer far superior. The bolts on the bed are very nice quality bolts. This is something you have to regularly change on cheaper printers. The resin vat, it's got really nice short locking nuts. Some of them are just far too long and they're prone to threading. These just lock in in a couple of turns, which is brilliant. Now, using a brand new resin on a brand new printer, sometimes it's a little bit scary and I'm never confident that the first print you're ever going to print is going to work. And my recommendation is printing something that's pre-supported. Support fails are normally most of the issues. So use a pre-supported model. The model that I'm printing is from Loot Studios and it's a, a model you get if you've been subscribed with them for nine months. So one thing I want to say about this is it's very, very quiet. I've got my mic pretty close to it as in that's quite a quiet machine. Um, most machines I've got are very, very noisy. And uh, I'm pretty impressed with this just on how quiet it is. I mean, it's not a problem for most people if you've got like a pantry that you're printing or a, an office or something like that. And with me, it's in a warehouse, so it, I don't, noise doesn't bother me. I just set it off like this and leave it. Um, but if noise is a thing, it's very quiet. Typical PC fan noise, really. Impressed. Oh, and I'm filming me resin time lapse with resi lapse from uh, Uncle Jesse. Um, I don't think I've ever said that I actually use that, but it's a nice little cable. Stick it underneath and you get some awesome time lapses, which you'll see now. Now, there's nothing more frustrating than a failed print, and I can say that my first print was perfect. Using the pre supported models from Loop with factory settings, brand new resin, brand new printer, and it fills you full of confidence. You instantly know you've got a reliable machine, which is nice. Now for cleaning resins, I prefer methylated spirits over isopropanol. It just seems to do a better job, and every time I go back to isopropanol, I'm never happy. The one thing I will say though is the model was quite difficult to get off the build plate, so I will adjust the base layer exposures just to make that a little bit easier. And the supports just came off. There was a little bit firmer than the what I'm used to on Z-Mud, which isn't a bad thing. It means you're going to have less fails because it is slightly tougher. The IB, I printed exactly the same models with the best settings I could. And off the bat, I couldn't really see much of a difference. 
there was some sharpening that I could see that was better than the IB, but once you get them primed and chuck a wash on, this is when things really start to stand out. The face of the model printed on the IB, which is a 4K printer, it's large so it's normally knocking out at 2K. The muscle recesses, the stone texture, the texture on the cloth, it's just not as sharp as this one. As you can see straight away, the face, it's a lot more captured in detail. The muscle definition is stronger. The texture on the cloth is far superior. And the stone, it's just sharp. It's just a thousand times better. I was very shocked. At first, I was a bit underwhelmed. But once you get them primed and a wash on, you can see the difference. Could I tell the difference if I'd not had a comparison? Probably not. I'm very happy with what I'm producing on the IB, but when you put both the models together, all them little details make a massive difference. So guys, I've really enjoyed playing with this printer. Out the box, their settings, their printer, temperature of the room is very, very good. It printed very successfully. What I like about this printer as well is they don't dial in stupid lift speeds. It's not about speed, it's about quality and it's nice to see that the standard settings are around 60, which I print between 40 and 60 most times to get best results. I hate slip marks, I hate layer lines, and the one thing that I'm not noticing on these prints is layer lines. So the extra resolution, being able to print a lot lower layer height, it makes up for it. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I wasn't really convinced in the resolution, and to say this is out of the box settings, all them little extra bits of detail do add up. So Frozen, you've converted me. Your printer is literally the best printer I have played with to date as far as quality of the printer and quality of the print. It's not all hearsay on the internet. It is uh, a very, very good printer. If anybody is interested in this, there is a link below. I'm not affiliated, I'm not gonna make any money off this. Um, you get a bottle of resin free if you buy the printer with the link below and 10% off. Um, if I'd not had this printer, I'd still say the models that I'm printing on my IB and my Harlot Sky was as best as it could be. But after seeing this, the extra, extra resolution does matter. And I'm gonna take it home now. I'm going to have a real play with it over Christmas and I'm gonna print my entire new army on it uh, for next year. So you can see some cool videos of me building a new army for my favorite systems. So guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, don't forget to check out Geek Gaming Scenics in, in your local shops all around the, and the world. The more you buy from your local friendly gaming store, the more it helps them and the more it helps me. Share the love, guys, all right? Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and if you've got any questions, bang them below, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go home now, go to bed, and wrap up warm to try and shake off this illness that I've had for nearly four weeks. Um, but yeah, I will catch you for the next one. Love, love, love.